Good morning, everyone. Thank you for logging in. We'll be starting in just a few moments. Teachers, if you wouldn't mind uh, letting me know if you are able to hear my audio and if you can uh, see my screen, I'm gonna go ahead and share something uh, on the screen. So if I could just get a response in the chat, let me know that you're able to see my screen and that you can hear me. Good morning, everyone. We'll get started in just a few moments. Teachers, if you could, through the chat, let me know if you can see my screen and if you can hear me, please. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Egan. All right, we're gonna wait one more minute and then we'll get started. Okay. Is there sub with them? Yeah, he is. Good morning, Miss Floyd. Can you hear me? Awesome. All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us for this morning's uh, Zoom meeting. Students, the purpose of this meeting is to talk about our expectations for you for this school year. And our goal is to get everybody on the same page so we can have a successful year. And so I'm gonna begin by talking about changing expectations. You are no longer seventh graders, you're eighth graders. And as we get going through the year, you're gonna be basically um, eight and a half graders, eight and three quarter graders, and really the whole purpose of eighth grade is to prepare you for high school. So you will see a marked difference in what your teachers expect from you from a behavioral standpoint, as well as from an academic standpoint. Again, the likelihood is that when more is expected, more is achieved. We would be doing you a disservice if we didn't increase the expectations because they do increase tremendously when you get to high school. So Again, I need you to take any preconceived notions of what middle school was like and understand that we're going to be um, asking you to work harder, to make better choices, and to set higher standards for yourselves because we know that when you do those things, you're going to be really successful. The other thing I'm going to say to you, and I'm just going to be upfront about it, is that your middle school experience has been different from that of most of the students who have come through middle school before. If you think about it, your last quarter of sixth grade was interrupted, and last year was a definitely different year. Hopefully, we're coming through things, and things are looking and returning a little more to normal, although we still have some challenges that we're overcoming. The bottom line is we can either be people who complain about things and become victims, which I hope is not going to be the way that we're going to go, but instead become people who work through adversity, challenge themselves, and rise to the occasion. Think about it this way. You guys have the opportunity to show everybody that no matter how challenging our tasks are, that we can overcome those things, right? And so it's time to buckle down, to get ourselves back in the gear, to um, 
increase our expectations and hold ourselves accountable to those expectations and then move forward. Because ultimately it's your future that's being decided by your work here at school, um, both in terms of how you conduct yourself as well as how you perform in your academic tasks. Now you're not alone. There are a lot of people here at this school who are here to help you. Obviously starting first with Mr. Salerno, you guys hear him every morning on the morning news. And then next would be myself. I'm Mr. Middleton, I'm your eighth grade administrator. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you with me. You guys are, are my kids and we're gonna work through this together. You're lucky to be also supported by Mrs. Ferguson, your eighth grade guidance counselor. You've known her for, for three years. Well, by the end of this year, you will have known her for three years and she's a great asset to our team. Other people that are help, they're helping adults are Corporal Curtis, whose office is down on the first floor, and Mr. Davis, who's also there as well. And then we have our school uh, nurse and our clinic assistant, Mrs. Kidling and Ms. Yoder. And then obviously you guys know the people at the front desk, Ms. Bunker, Ms. Hoy, and then our data entry and registrar, Ms. Swab and Ms. Majewitz. We have other administrators and other guidance counselors as well, because ultimately at the end of the day, you are all our students. Um, and I, I wanted to make sure you understood that you have a team of adults who are here to help you. And obviously, probably your greatest sort of assistance, source of assistance, are going to be your classroom teachers. Our eighth grade teachers are an outstanding group of educators and have helped many, many, many eighth grade students um, get to high school and be successful. So lean on their assistance. And I promise you, if they're giving you some advice, there's probably a really good reason that they're giving it to you would be a good idea to probably pay attention and listen. This was an image from last year's promotion ceremony. Kids, I want you to look at that picture. This is your goal for the end of this year. We want you to be sitting in those seats. You can't really see them because of the masks, but I promise you that everybody had a big grin on their face um, because of the feeling that they got from being part of that group and having achieved that accomplishment. So my goal for you is that you get a seat at that ceremony and you get to participate and enjoy that feeling knowing that you're ready and prepared to move on to high school. So remember our expectation is for you to sort of success and this is what it, the end product looks like. So what are some things that I would recommend for you? What are some advice that I would give you at the beginning of this school year? Well, there's a, there's a couple things. First, be honest. Make sure that you have the courage to do the right thing and build a good reputation. This is your last year in middle school. But trust me when I tell you that your habits lead to high school. Hey, be quiet. So please make sure that you're I didn't have to listen to working my, my on establishing computer. a good reputation and that you do the right thing. Make sure that you respect You know, that's probably the greatest yeah, thing I could encourage you to do. Fantastic. Everybody has come through a pretty tough time over the past year and a bit. And the more we show other people respect and we accept their differences and respect them as human beings, the happier we're all going to be. And that includes being considerate of the feelings of other people. Don't be callous, don't be hard, don't be cold. Be caring. Make sure that you respect all staffs and students here at school and I'm doing online it through as my well. computer. Hello? Ms. Sir, and if you could mute yourself, please. Thank you. Make sure that you're showing responsibility. Remember, the expectations are increased this year, and we need to make sure that we're reaching new higher levels. Oftentimes, students, if you think before you act, you may make different choices and therefore not end up in any sort of trouble. So again, thinking is probably the, 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 best, the, the next best piece of advice that I could give you. And please make sure you consider the consequences of your actions. You know, all actions have, have an opposite and equal reaction. So, and that's a science th thing for you right there. Um, so please understand that there are consequences for our actions. So if we think before we act, we consider what those consequences are, we generally will make better choices. And then in terms of how you interact with each other, be kind, smile more, say hello, be polite. 
And then probably the third most important one I would say is take responsibility for your mistakes and don't blame other people. You know, William Shakespeare, you know, the, your language art teacher is going to love this. I'm going to spit some uh, knowledge at you. William Shakespeare had a uh, saying that was, to thy own self be true. Basically meaning don't, don't lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Because that's the only way that you can then make better choices and move forward. If you're not taking responsibility and you're blaming other people, then you're not going to be able to make the changes. And eighth grade is a year to make changes to prepare yourself for high school. Now we have some school-wide expectations and you will see that these signs are posted all throughout our campus. They also are posted in your teacher's classrooms and your teachers have taken the same chart and have started in some cases to work on creating their own classroom expectations with you. And they're pretty self-explanatory and they're created in four categories, right? How to be respectful, how to be responsible, how to be safe, and how to be a problem solver. And you'll see that this chart shows you what it looks like to be any one of those four things in each of these different areas. So for instance, the classroom, the cafeteria, the hallways, et cetera. And so as an example, we've given you some pretty specific things we would like you to do to show us that you're making good choices in each of these areas. So what does it look like to be respectful in the cafeteria? That means don't be too loud. Don't leave a, you know, leave a clean space. Don't make a mess. You know, when you want to go somewhere, what does responsible look like? It means raising your hand to get permission. To be safe, it means you stay seated unless you get permission. All right? And when, as a problem solver, we ask you to talk to people politely and get adults to assist you. So again, these are our school-wide expectations. If we find that students aren't meeting the expectations, then we'll have to redirect you to look at these uh, different pieces. Uh, but the bottom line is, if everybody does what you see here, we will have a very, very pleasant uh, school year, and we expect to, to have that. Now, one of the things that we've done in the past, and some of you are, might be new to us, but those of you who aren't, you'll see uh, more of this taking place, is we're going to continue to use our Ravenclaw cash cards. Yes, students, those cash, cash cards from last year are still good and we will be allowing you to purchase things uh, with them moving forward. We are um, opening our school store sometime in the very near future, and we also will have a student lounge. And what does that look like? Well, that will be something that you will be able to purchase the ability to go to. Um, and so instead of going into the cafeteria, uh, you'll be able to purchase a ticket to go to the school lounge, a student lounge with a friend, and you'll be able to enjoy a more relaxed lunch atmosphere. Um, we're hoping it's an area where there could be music, where there could be uh, some games being played, a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere instead of being in the, in the cafeteria. And that's something that students will be able to make a purchase for, um, of, to be able to participate. And also, as I mentioned before, the school store. So we'll be doing goodies, um, like the slushies and the, and the cookies we did before and the different treats, as well as, again, the school store and the, um, and, and the student lounge. How do you get them? Well, your teachers are the ones who give you Ravenclaw cash cards. And they do it because they see you being respectful, being responsible, being a problem solver. So when you, when you follow along with these traits, when you follow along with our school-wide uh, behavioral expectations and your teacher's classroom expectations, you're gonna get rewarded for those things. So um, please make good choices so we can give you the rewards you deserve. And again, you'll get Ravenclaw cash cards. The ones from last year are good for this year and we'll be continuing to hand out new ones as the year uh, goes by. Now, we also have On Track. On Track will be returning. It was a little different last year because obviously so many of you were not here, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, but On Track will be something that we'll be continuing. And so just so you know, what does on track look like? And again, our goal, my goal is for every single one of you to be on track for this school year. And that is C's or betters in all your classes as marked at the progress report and the report card um, and zero office uh, referrals in a quarter and less than two for the entire year. Guys, last year's eighth graders had fewer than a hundred referrals for the entire year. And they were a big class. It was like 500 of them. 
I'm anticipating that you guys can even do better than that. So again, that's our goal for this year from a behavior standpoint. I'd love if no eighth graders receive referrals. That might not be realistic, but I'm confident if you set your goal for you individually not to receive one at all, that you can make that take place, right? Normally attendance is also part of our on track, but again, because of the current circumstances we're in, we understand that sometimes people might not have the opportunity to come to school because they might be close contacts to somebody who tested positive for COVID or they themselves might be sick. We don't want people who are ill coming to school. So the attendance is something that we're not gonna be um, looking at as critically as we have in the past, right? Um, so for the, for the purpose of this year, we're really looking at your course performance. These are better in your classes um, for progress report and your quarter report cards, as well as uh, no discipline referrals um, in a quarter. All right. Please make sure that you're looking at your grades in my student. Um, the last two slides were really more for your parents. We are going to be posting this presentation online so that your parents can see it and doing a, a telephone call so that way they, they know that, that it's out there. Um, but realistically, guys, obviously your parents are still an important part of your, uh, of your success uh, in school. And we are gonna encourage your parents to keep track of um, you, you know, how you're doing grade wise in my student and in my learning. That being said, you're eighth graders, you're, you're no longer little sixth graders you should be looking at my student and my learning yourself as well on a daily basis in airtime to make sure that you're not missing any work, to check on your grades, um, and, and to really get a picture of where you're, where you're going. Um, sticking your head in your sand and pretending you don't know what your grades are or maybe not wanting to look, guys, that doesn't get, any, that doesn't get you anywhere, right? It goes back to that quote I, I talked to you about earlier about be true to thy own self. Right. So be true to yourself. Don't don't be dishonest um, because, again, your grades are a reflection of your success in school. And as I mentioned before, you have a large support network from your teachers to myself. Uh, we'll talk about some academic supports in a little bit, but you have a large group of people here to help you. Um, so there really isn't an excuse for poor performance, um, especially if you haven't reached out to do anything about it. Now, the thing that I'm most excited about talking to you guys about today are about our eighth grade activities. Eighth grade, the end of eighth grade, should be some of the most fun time you've had in middle school and is really a culmination of everything that you have done through middle school. And boy, let me tell you, by the time you guys get to the end of your eighth grade year, you will have earned it, right? Because again, as I mentioned previously, your experience in middle school is different from that of just about any other group of students that I can, I can recollect. And I've been doing this for 25 years. So our, our goal is to have a lot of fun and to celebrate your performance and your accomplishments at the end of the year. And so what you see on the screen right here are our scheduled events. And notice that it says subject to change based on COVID-19. Again, I, I don't control the future, but these are our scheduled events and they are scheduled on the calendar. So right now we are planning on going to Grad Venture at Universal Studios on May 6th. And then the far, very next Friday, you have the eighth grade dance on May 13th. And then the very next Friday, you have your eighth grade field day. For those of you who are seventh grade students here, do you remember seeing those giant inflatables and seeing all of your eighth grade friends that day? They had a great time that day. You'll have a great time that day. So again, that's another one of our events. And then we have our eighth grade promotion ceremonies on May 23rd and 24th. We have to split them because we are going to invite your parents to this ceremony. We weren't able to do that last time, but that image of you with the confetti wands and the confetti raining down and everybody happy, that's what I want you all to have. And I want your parents there to see it with you. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll have the promotion ceremonies depending on what team you're on. But the bottom line is, this is our eighth grade activities. Now, how do you participate? How do you get into them? Well, that's where we're gonna go next. So there are two types of academic or two types of eligibility requirements for eighth grade activities. So the first thing is to be able to go to the eighth grade activities, you have to be passing your classes. You have to make sure that you're going to be going on to high school. And so if those of you who, struggled in sixth or seventh grade, 
and who have failed a core class as language arts, math, science, and social studies, we have to get those classes recovered in order for you to make, meet promotion standards, in order for you to go to high school. That's a state law. You also have to pass your eighth grade core classes. So the classes you're in right now, language arts, math, science, and social studies, you have to pass. So if you don't pass those classes or are not passing those classes, we can't have you participate in these eighth grade activities. We will do everything we can to help make sure that everybody is eligible, but you have to do your part as well. The good news is if you have failed something in the past, but you recover it, then you become eligible again. So as long as you're not failing your eighth grade classes and you've recovered everything in sixth or seventh, you'll be able to participate. And again, I want everybody to hear me very clearly. We want every single one of you to participate in all of the eighth grade activities. There are also some behavioral eligibility requ requirements. From January 24th forward, anybody who gets ISS loses the next eighth grade activity. Anybody who gets OSS loses all of the eighth grade activities. So we're setting a really high expectation for you, but the reality is you should actually be able to meet this with no problem. Again, in terms of OSS, we give OSS for the most serious breaches of the code of conduct. If you fight or instigate a fight, if you curse at a staff member, if you bring things to school that you shouldn't bring to school, or you have a continued history of getting in trouble, you may receive OSS after January 24th, and then you cannot participate in the eighth grade activities. The only one that is not required uh, for, uh, um, for behavior is the promotion ceremony because your parents can come and then they can take you right after the ceremony is over. Again, if you get ISS, then you don't go to one of them in the next um, event that's on the list. What we found is by being upfront with students about this, that we have very few, and in some cases, no students that miss out on these events. So my, my hope is by being upfront with you and you guys will see that that's the way I operate. I tell you upfront exactly the way we're gonna do things and then hope that we can help you make the right choices. Um, but again, our goal is for everybody to go, but we wanna make sure that the event is pleasant for everybody. And so we're telling you upfront what the requirements are. So again, you have behavioral requirements and you have academic requirements, but we're gonna help you make sure this happens, okay? As long as you make the right choices as well and do your part. So I talked about this before, where, where do you get academic help, right? Because obviously on track status is based on academics. Um, your eighth grade activities is based on academics. Your promotion to high school is, is based on your academics. Well, the first place is yourself by checking my student and being aware of missing work, right? That's the number one thing in terms of your grades. If you're missing work, it really hurts your grade. So get your work done. That's why we give you 30 minutes a day of airtime. Right. Get with your teachers. Your teachers are your greatest resource for help. And that includes those support teachers that are there to help you as well. So Mr. Laws, Ms. Surin, Mr. Baxter, all of our teachers that are in our in our um, ESE department um, are here to help you. But we don't read minds and we need you to do your part as well. Your guidance counselor, Ms. Ferguson, is an, also a, an excellent source of assistance. Myself, I will help you with anything that I can. Um, and there's a lot that I can help you with. Uh, so don't be shy about talking to us if you have some concerns. Mr. Dojcik, his office is in the media center. He helps with course recovery and will help you uh, stay on track. I can't tell you how many eighth graders last year got to participate in that promotion ceremony because of how hard he and Ms. Ship worked. Ms. Ship is the um, is our is our paraprofessional that's in the. Um, in the lab with Mr. Dojcik. Um, I can't tell you how many kids um, made it um, because of their efforts um, for the, on behalf of those students. And then obviously airtime, half an hour a day to get your work done, to get help from your teachers, to get caught up is such an important time. I don't wanna see you waste it by basically sitting on your, on your phones and doing something other than what you should be doing, right? You check your work, you make sure you get your work done and you keep up with your grades and you'll be a very successful eighth grade students. Why is it not sounding? Sound. Um, some of this stuff I, I'm gonna go on over next is basically just information 
you know that you, you probably have known. And please make sure that you're what? using the crosswalk there between Metmore and Sunlight Boulevard, or the um, the crosswalk by the clubhouse or the entry point um, to come into school. We we want to make sure that you guys are using the correct entry points when you're when you're coming to to our school. Bike riders, again, you need to make sure you lock your bikes up in the bike rack. Um, and wear a helmet, that would be our suggestion. It, again, it really is state law and you can get a ticket if you're, if you're not. And we need you to really walk your bikes once you get onto, onto campus um, because we don't want you running into anybody and, and, and get any, getting anybody hurt. You know, we have a pretty strict electronic policy. And basically the number one rule with this is that you need permission to use your phone when you are in the class. Teachers get to decide exactly what happens with phones and make sure that you're not using them as a distraction. You have enough to worry about, enough work to do, and enough things to pay attention to that adding another um, thing that's going to distract your attention from what we need to get done is not a helpful situation. You are allowed to use your phones in the hallways in the cafeteria, um, but you need to make sure that you're not using them in class without permission from your teachers. And that if we find that you're abusing it, you can lose the privilege of using your, your electronic devices in, um, in the classroom. I really don't want to become the cell phone police, but I have had students every year when I've been in charge of eighth grade have to drop off their phones in my office. I'd rather not do that for you. I'd like, I prefer to have you handle it responsibly, uh, but at the same time, that could be something that could happen. So please make sure you abide by our rules when it comes to your electronic device use. Um, you're not allowed to use them in restrooms or locker rooms. You're not allowed to take pictures or videos um, unless your teacher has given you permission. You're not allowed to use your, your phone uh, to make calls in class without getting permission from a school staff member. Okay, so if you have a reason to use a phone, your teachers are very reasonable people. Ask for permission. In most cases, if there's a good reason, we'll give you permission to do so. But again, Ask for permission first. Don't ask for forgiveness after you're getting caught with your phone. And then, again, this is something we share with your parents. Guys, some of these apps, and I know are wonderful, and I probably should put them in there as well. Um, some of these are great, but they're a giant distractor from what we need to get done at school. So please be smart about how you use these, these um, apps and when you use them. Because again, there's a lot of negative that can come from, uh, from using these apps the wrong way. We do have a, a bring your own device policy. Your teachers will be sharing that information with you through airtime in the near future. Um, and it's something we also send home and share with your, with your parents electronically. So please make sure that you're aware of what the rules are. And again, I basically have gone over it with you. Um, it's about using your, your digital tools responsibly, right? Um, and so when you're responsible, we don't have problems. When you're not responsible, that's when we have problems. And when we have a problem, it's gonna mean that you're gonna lose privileges. So that's basically the, the, the gist of what I, I, I wanna talk to you um, about this. Don't be that one kid that gets their cell phone taken away or loses the privilege to have an electronic device here at school. Don't be that one kid. There always seems to be one, Please don't be that one. Again, some of this is for your parents so they know where your classes are. Obviously, you guys are on the third floor. I'm happy to say that all the eighth grade uh, teams are, are here on the third floor. So that's something that, that, that is uh, good. And obviously, those of you who have electives know that pretty much you're having to travel to other floors. It's the, the nature of the, of the, of the beast. Um, the good news is by the end of your eighth grade year, you will be very strong in your in your legs <laughs> because you're going to be walking up and down uh, the stairs. Again, you're not allowed to use the elevator unless you have an elevator pass. So the only people who can get elevator passes are people who bring something into the clinic and they're given an elevator pass. So if you have that kind of an issue, you need to make sure you talk, touch base with, uh, with the, the nurse and our clinic assistant, that's Ms. Kitling and Ms. Yoder. Oh, and then going back one more time to the to the map. Again, I know Mr. Shalorno mentioned this yesterday in uh, or on Tuesday. We are not allowed to use those outer stairwells during the day. The only time you're allowed to use those outer stairwells are to exit the building at the end of sixth period after your teachers walked you to that exit point. 
And at the beginning of the day, when you're coming in through your designated entry point, please make sure you're using the correct spot, but you do not go into those stairwells during passing period during any other time. Um, you know what our airtime is for? We've talked to you guys about that. Please make sure that you use airtime appropriately. And then there are lots of special activities that you can participate in. Our SWAT team, Fellowship Christian um, students, NJHS, a lot of our athletics, please get involved. The more involved you are, the better off and the happier you're gonna be as an eighth grade student. Please make sure you arrive. Um, if you come into the building, you can come in at 710 and you have to go to your first period class. You can get breakfast in the atrium. And at that point, then you need to make sure you're eating your breakfast in the atrium. We do not want you wandering around between 710 and 725. If you come into the building at 710 or whenever you come into the building, you go directly to your class. Okay. The dress code has changed a little bit, folks. You need to make sure you re re revise um, and look at it. I'm going to hold everyone for just a second. I've got two more slides. Okay, so just sit tight for just a second. Um, please make sure you're looking at the dress code. Again, students, the most um, significant change is that you can have uh, holes or rips in your jeans or pants, but at no point for any sort of clothing can you expose any undergarments. So that's probably the most significant change. Just make sure that no undergarments are, are visible. Okay. And then the last thing I'll, I'll say to you guys is, for every minute of every class of every day, we want you to reach um, and, and reach the challenges that are before you. Make sure you put everything into it and you're gonna end up having a great eighth grade year. Thank you very much. All right, thank you everybody.